this is Bridget of the Boyer Family Singers here to answer the questions that you posed to me in my 2015 Q&A. Now you all asked some great questions but unfortunately due to timing I won't be able to answer every single one of them however much I would love to. So I only chose a few. There are still quite a lot. Um, but I chose the ones that I think would be most interesting for you all to hear. Um, and the ones that were most frequently asked as well. So, I hope you enjoy this video and stay tuned for those questions. So, first up, we have sewing and creativity questions, a subject near and dear to my own heart. Mary asks, which do you prefer sewing on, modern or vintage sewing machines? Vintage. You just cannot top a vintage sewing machine with all metal parts that you can pretty much fix yourself and oil yourself and there's not this complicated you know, rigmarole about tuning it all up and the vintage. <laughs> Alright, C. Grace asks, what was the most difficult slash frustrating hard to complete sewing project you ever did? I think, oh gosh, it's this is a hard question to answer. I think probably the hardest, maybe the hardest, would be a uh, wedding dress that I did. Um, the hemming for it had the most ginormous skirt ever. I did the hemming and the bustle for it. And just dealing with all that fabric, uh, I, I, I almost swore that I would never alter a wedding dress again, which of course didn't happen. But. Yes, I think that was probably the most frustrating project, just dealing with all that fabric at once uh, in a garment that was already assembled. Yeah. Lydia asks, what sort of things do you like to make in the kitchen? I like making Asian food. I like making anything chocolate. I actually made some delightful cookies and cream donuts this morning. They were so good. Um, that's, I, I like making a lot of things. I mean, just whatever strikes my mood. I like making weird dishes that taste good. It can't be weird and it tastes weird. No. It has to sound like it'll taste good. <laughs> Alright. And Mary Stevens asks, Do you have any other hobbies besides sewing and singing? Pretty much baking, cooking, and knitting and playing the piano. Samantha Snyder asks, oh dear, what was your biggest sewing catastrophe? Oh! <laughs> yes, Charlotte reminded me. I drafted, it was when I was first getting into pattern drafting and I had no idea what I was doing. And I had no idea about fitting patterns. I made myself a blue peach skin dress with an invisible zipper up the back of his drop waist and I basically fit it to it within an inch of my life and the invisible zipper kept on um, busting every time I would zip it up and so Jessica wore it for a singing performance one time she was playing a, she was singing a Mary Poppins song and she put on the dress but the zipper bust right before we had to leave. So mom basically had to cut her out of the dress because we could not get the zipper back down. And so the dress was just shot. Esther asks, do you sew your sister's dresses like the USS Alabama sailor outfits or do you all work on them? <sighs> mom usually starts the process so I will do any alterations to the pattern and all that and I typically, the girls and I, we all work together on designing them. Um, though I typically pick out the pattern and the fabric, though we all have input on that. Uh, but mom will start sewing them. Usually I'll help, either help with that or I'll end up taking over just doing the final details and stuff. But for the USS Alabama sailor outfits, we all worked on them. Um, though I ended up finishing them because the girls didn't have time. But, you know, because we all know to sew, how to sew, we'll sometimes do teamwork on them, sometimes I'll just do them or mom will just do them, whatever. So, Bonnie asks, what is your most favorite item of clothing you've ever sewed? 
I think it would have to be my 1940s yellow dress that I wore for Remembering World War II in 2014. I love that dress. It was made with vintage rayon that I believe is from the 40s. And it just and it was made from an authentic pattern that was actually traced off of a vintage pattern that I found it long story. Anyways, I I just love the details that went into it, the shirring, the um, buttons, you know, pinking the seams and so for those of you who don't know what dress I'm talking about, this is the dress. You can see it's a very, very pretty fabric. Um, and I actually got to use some vintage Mother of Pearl buttons and a buckle that came on the original card. I think there must have been from like May the 1920s. Um, and then it has this gorgeous shirring detail at the waist. And it has tucks and everything. Yeah, it's a pretty dress. It's, it's my favorite. Samantha Smith asks, what would you do if you couldn't ever sew again? If I couldn't ever sew again, that would be a very very sad day. Very sad day. I'd probably cry for weeks. Um, if I could never sew again, if I could still use my hands, I would probably bake and cook a lot and knit. I can tell you this, she would go mad. Yes, I would. <laughs> I would probably find some other craft to do, but if I couldn't use my hands, if it was for some reason I couldn't use my hands, I have absolutely no idea. Acacia asks, when did you learn to sew? And actually quite a few of you asked this question, so... I learned to sew whenever I was... I think I was seven. I just told my mom one day, I want to learn to sew, can you teach me how? She didn't know a whole lot, so she taught me what she knew about hand sewing. And then uh, the next, I think it was the next summer, I got to go to a sewing camp. And then the following summer, I got to go to a sewing camp. And so after that, I was basically self-taught. So, yeah, that's when I learned to sew. I was seven years old. So now I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to do a speed round where I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can. Though I picked the shortest questions that I could with the shortest answers. And for the sake of trying to get all these questions in in less than a minute, I'm not going to say who asked them. So, I have a stopwatch on the phone that I'm going to time myself with, and it'll be somewhere up above me, hopefully, the timing. So, ready? On your marks? Get set? Go. Is your house decorated vintage? No. I'm sure it's been said somewhere, but what part do you sing? Second soprano. What is your favorite time of day? Probably middle of the day, afternoon. Night owl or morning lark? Night owl. My sisters can testify to that. Do you drink coffee? No. Is your hair naturally curly? Yes. What is your favorite animal? I don't know, dog? I have no idea. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Coral. Red. Are you a tomboy or a girly girl? Girly girl. Would you rather cook or bake? Bake. Do you lift weights? Sometimes. What color are your eyes? Hazel. Have you ever sewn for anyone outside your nuclear family? Yes. Have you tried quilting before? If so, do you like it? Yes, and not really. And I am done. 56 seconds. So, yay, I did it. Fairly. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to lifestyle questions, and this is different from personal. It's just basically how our family lives and questions about that. So, Acacia asks, do you share a room with all of your sisters? And actually, quite a few of you asked this. And she also asks, if you do, do you sometimes wish you had your own room? I do have, each of us girls have our own room. It used to be that Charles and I shared a room and Jessica had her own room. But it just got to a point where that involved too many fights and such. And so, and we just wanted our own rooms. So, um, yeah, we just each have our own rooms. So. Naomi Bennett asks, what would be your dating rules? Well, we aren't actually going to date. We are going to court, which essentially 
is like a time of research to get to know um, the young man and for him to get to know you. I'm going to use me as an example. There's nothing going on with me right now as far as that sort of stuff, but I'm going to use it just to set up a scenario and show you what that looks like. He would go to dad, dad would interview him to make sure that he was even remotely compatible, you know, belief wise, um, you know, lifestyle wise, everything else um, with me. And then he would run the idea, dad would run the idea by me and see if I even liked or even was interested in the young man. And then after that we would go through a period, it, the timing of that would all vary, but of getting to know one another, asking the hard questions and, you know, just exploring if this, if the idea of getting married would even work. And the whole point of it would be to see if we are compatible for, for marriage. Um, it wouldn't be just like a time of playing around or whatever. It it's, has a goal in mind. But it would be in such a way as if it doesn't work out, we wouldn't end up like being all awkward and, you know, not be able to be friends anymore or, you know. So that's basic dating, courting rules. Samantha Snyder asks, how and when did you and your sisters learn to dance and do you get to dance very often? Um, we learned to dance, I think it was, I may have been eight or nine. It was at, it was back when we lived in Washington, our church hosted a Heritage Weekend dance and um, there was a family who taught the waltz and the polka, and then there was someone else who I believe taught the Virginia reel. Um, and so that was lots of fun. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of opportunities to dance. We used to hold dances at our house like once or twice a year, um, starting with uh, Jessica's 16th birthday party. But we don't get to do that very often anymore just because of our singing schedule. But whenever we do, we enjoy it to the fullest. Camilla asks, and actually a few of you asked this, um, I think you're newer readers to our blog so I completely understand you asking this. Uh, she asks, are you girls homeschooled? I remember you mentioning it before. If so, have you always been homeschooled? Who decided to put you on homeschool and why? In my country it's rather uncommon so I'm curious to know. Yes, um, we were homeschooled. Jessica and I are graduated. Charlotte's the baby of the family and she's the only one still in school. Um, we were homeschooled all our lives. All our lives, that sounds really weird to say, but yeah, all, all our lives. It basically means, basically it was mom and dad, they believed about teaching that it extends past the nine to three typical school hours, you know, it's, you learn every single moment, every single second of your life. So, and it, it co clearly commands in the Bible that, you know, you are to teach your children every hour of the day with everything you do. And so, Mom and Dad just really took that to heart and they saw a wonderful example of a family that they knew and the ways that their children had grown up. They had been homeschooled, these children were, and they were just so respectful and confident and they just had, they were so strong in their faith and Mom and Dad really wanted that for their children. We, I don't think we girls were even born yet when they decided this. And so they, they just knew we have to homeschool. We are going to do this. And I think it was the best decision that they could have ever made. I would not want it any other way.